डियर स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू ट्वेंटी थर्ड ऑनलाइन क्लास ऑफ कंट्रोल सिस्टम इंजीनियरिंग वी आर स्टडिंग रूल्स एसोसिएटेड विद स्केचिंग ऑफ रूट लोकस इन लास्ट क्लास वी स्टडीड अबाउट ब्रेक अवे और ब्रेक और ब्रेक इन पॉइंट ऑफ रूट लोकस ऑन रियल एक्सिस एंड एंगल ऑफ अराइवल और एंगल ऑफ डिपार्चर फॉर कॉम्प्लेक्स जीरोज और पोल्स of the open loop system and then we studied the summary of rules used for sketching of root locus dear students in today's class we will study how to find coordinates of the point on root locus and their associated gains for a design problem students contents of today's lecture are example for root locus and then we will study transient response design through gain adjustment dear students for the system given in the figure we have to sketch root locus and we have to find the following specifications or points of root locus first one is the exact point and and gain where the root locus crosses j omega axis the break away point on real axis and the range of gain k within which our closed loop system is stable students if you look at forward path transfer function it have two zeros and two poles and an unknown parameter gain k dear students now we will start the solution first of all we will sketch the pole zero map for open loop system the open loop system have two poles on real axis at location of minus 2 and minus 4 and have complex zeros at 2 plus minus j4 now from rule 3 the root locus segments will lie between two poles and from rule 4 we know that root locus will start from open loop system poles and will end on open loop system zeros students so on increasing the gain the poles at minus 2 and minus 4 will move toward real axis segment and at some point they will strike and break away from the real axis at angle of 90 degree and their final location will be open loop system zeros and these two rules give us the general shape of the root locus students as first part of the problem require the exact location where root locus crosses j omega axis and the value of gain k for exact location where root locus crosses j omega axis we will use route table with the help of characteristic equation of the closed loop system we find out that root locus crosses the j omega axis at point plus minus j 3.9 with a gain of 1.5 students point b of the problem requires to find break away point now with the help of differential method or transition method we can find break away point the point which will lie on real axis segment between two poles which are at 
minus 2 and minus 4 will be our breakaway point and here sigma equals minus 2.88 which lies on real axis segment and is our away point students from section a we know that for gain have value of 1.5 our closed loop system poles lie on imaginary axis and hence for stable operation it must be less than 1.5 so the range of values for stable operation will be greater than 0 and less than 1.5 dear students now we will study transient response design with the help of gain adjustment now we know that how to sketch a root locus we will show how to design it for transient response as we know that as we know that with changing the gain k the location of closed loop system poles is also changing and this location of poles also define the transient specification like settling time peak time peak time or percent overshoot now we will discuss the relation of closed loop system poles and their direct effect on this transient specification dear students in chapter 4 we have studied transient specification like settling time rise time peak time or percent overshoot for under damp second order system now we will relate we will relate these quantities to the location of poles that generates these characteristics students the pole plot for a general under damp second order system is given in the expanded form in this in this we have two complex poles in S plane the real part of the pole is known as sigma d which is known as exponential decay frequency and imaginary part is known as omega d which is damped frequency of damped frequency of oscillations now in the figure you will observe a right angle triangle and if we apply Pythagoras theorem then the radial distance from origin to the complex pole is natural frequency is natural frequency omega n and the relation for damping ratio zeta will be zeta equals cos of theta dear students now we will study behavior of transient specification with respect to poles location the first specification we are going to study is settling time settling time is given by is given by 4 divided by zeta omega n or 4 divided by sigma d here sigma d represent real part of poles location now in figure a Various various step responses are plotted against the poles location. If poles are moved in the vertical direction, keeping the real part same, the frequency of the response increases, but the envelope remains the same. The same, since the real part of poles location is constant or not changing, since all the curves will fit under the same exponential decay curve the settling time is virtually the same for all waveforms but here you will observe that overshoot is increasing and the rise time is decreasing as we are moving up in the vertical direction 
dear students next specification is peak time peak time is equal to pi divided by omega d where omega d is damped frequency of oscillation now students if you look at if you look at figure b we have step responses for pole location 1 now if we move toward left then imaginary part or damped frequency of oscillation will remains the same or we can say that peak time peak time of both the responses will be same hence the frequency is constant over the range of variation of the real part as the pole moves toward left the response will damp out more rapidly while the frequency while the frequency will remain the same here peak time is same for all waveform but percent overshoot and settling time both are changing dear students next specification is about percent overshoot from the Pole's location of underdamped system, we know that zeta equals cos of theta. Now, against against any value of percent overshoot, we will find out damping ratio zeta and plot a corresponding radial lines in S plane. Now, moving the poles along the constant radial line will give us response shown in the figure for all the poles location 1 2 or 3 the percent overshoot will remain the same and similarly speed of response is also getting changed with poles location at location 3 our response is much faster compared to poles at location 1 so farther the poles from the origin the more rapid response will be observed dear students now we will summarize the discussion from previous slides if you look at the figure in this we have constant lines for settling time peak time and percent overshoot Student, students the peak time is inversely proportional to the imaginary part of the pole as horizontal lines on the s planes are lines of constant imaginary value so they are also the lines of constant peak time Sim similarly the settling time is inversely proportional to the real part of the pole's location so the vertical lines on the s plane will be the line of constant real value or they will be known as lines of constant settling time finally we know that damping ratio zeta is equal to cos of theta will be the radial lines for lines of constant damping ratio since percent overshoot is the only function of damping ratio zeta so these radial lines will be of constant percent overshoot students now consider for a system design we have two set of condition given specification for first design are system must have settling time of t time of ts1 peak time of tp1 and percent overshoot of os1 the design of second system must have settling time of ts2 peak time of tp2 and overshoot of os2 students now corresponding to this specification we will draw lines on s plane for peak time we have constant horizontal line for settling time we have 
constant vertical lines and for percent overshoot we will have radial lines if you look at figure for set 1 the point where these lines will intersect will be the desired location for poles of the system students if you look at point a where settling line ts1 is intersecting percent overshoot line os1 for this our system will have desired settling time and percent overshoot but peak time will be different from the desi desired one or if you look at location b here tp1 is intersecting os1 so here peak time and percent overshoot will be desired but settling time will be different or if you, if you look at location c here tp1 and settling time is intersecting where we will have different percent overshoot students so for any set of desired specification we are achieving two, two specification we are doing trade-off with third specification dear students now so far we have studied formula for describing percent overshoot settling time and peak time for second order system only what if we have higher order system system for higher order system we make second order approximation and the response of higher order system is defined by dominant pair of poles dominant pair of pole lies near lies near to the origin and influence the response of the system students for second order approximation of a higher order system certain conditions are restated here if higher if higher order poles are much farther into left half of the s plane compared to second order pair of poles the response of the system that results from higher order pole do not appreciably change the transient response the transient response expected from the dominant second order poles second point is closed loop zeros near the closed loop second order pole pair are nearly cancelled by the close proximity of higher order closed loop poles loop poles third point is if closed loop zeros are not cancelled by the close proximity of higher order closed loop poles then these must be far away from the closed loop second order pole pair order pole pair students if the assumptions cannot be justified then you will have to simulate the solution in order to show that system dear students now we will analyze the condition for second order approximation first condition says that if higher order poles are farther in left half of the s plane then farther in left half of the s plane then the dominant pair of pole define the response of the system the first condition as it applies to root locus is shown graphically in figure a and b if you look at a and b if you look at figure b it will give us much better second order approximation than that of in figure a because the higher order pole p3 is farther away P3 is farther away from the dominant closed loop 
second order pair of pole P1 and P2. Dear students, now we will analyze graphically second condition which says that closed loop system poles near the closed loop second order pole pair are nearly cancelled by the close proximity of higher order order closed loop poles. If you look at figure C and D, the condition is shown graphically. Figure D gives us much better second order approximation than that of figure C because here close because here closed loop pole P3 is close to the closed loop 0 which cancel out their effect. Dear students, now we will summarize the design procedure for higher order system. First of all, we will sketch the root locus for the given system. Now we will assume that the system is a second order system without any, any zeros and then we will find gain to meet the transient specification. After this, we will justify our second order assumption by finding the location of all higher order poles and evaluating the fact that, that they must be far away from the j omega axis than the second order pair of pole. As a rule of thumb, the book suggests that the difference between dominant pair of pole or higher order pole must be of 5 times. You will also verify that closed loop 0 are approximately cancelled by the higher order poles. And if closed loop zeros are not cancelled by the higher order poles, then be sure that zero is far removed from the dominant second order pole pair to yield approximately the same response obtained without a finite zero. If the assumptions cannot be justified, your solution will have to be simulated in order to be sure that it meets the transient specification. Dear students, in the given design problem, we have to find value of gain k to give us 1.52% overshoot. And we also have to estimate the settling time, peak time, and steady state at error. Dear students, the root locus of the system is shown in the figure. Notice that system is a third order system with one zeros. Open loop system have three poles. One, one at 0, other at minus 1, and last at minus 10, where open loop system have a 0 at minus 1.5. Now the root locus segments will exist between pole at origin and pole at minus 1, minus 1, and second segment will exist between 0 at minus 1.5 and pole at minus 10. As gain will be increased, the roots will move towards these root locus segments. Students, it, it was required that we have to find the value of gain k to give us 1.52% overshoot. So for this, we will find the value of zeta which equals 0 0.8 and plot a radial line with the angle of theta. theta which will be equal to cos inverse of zeta. Now, on increasing the gain, poles will move and will break away from the real axis. 
if you look at figure we have we have two breakaway and one break in points and three locations where the poles of the closed loop system will intersect the radial line of constant damping ratio dear students from the root locus we can summarize that breakaway points on the real axis occur between origin and minus 1 and also between minus 1.5 and minus 10 where gain reaches a maximum value on real axis breakaway points are found to be minus 0 0.62 with a gain of 2.511 and at minus 4.4 with a gain of 28.89 break in point on the real axis occur between minus 1.5 and minus 10 and for this gain will have a local minimum a break in point is found to be minus 2.8 with a gain of 27 point students now we will assume that system can be approximated by a second order underdamp system without any zeros. A 1.52% overshoot corresponds to a damping ratio of 0 0.8 and for this we will see a line of constant damping ratio. Now along constant damping ratio line we will search for the points where the angle from the open loop system and zeros add up to 180 degree and this will be the point locus crosses 0 0.8 damping ratio or 1.52 percent overshoot in this case we have three points that justify the given criteria these points are minus 0 0.87 plus j 0 points minus 1.19 plus j 0 0.90 and minus 4.6 plus j 3.45 with respective gains of 7.36 12.79 and 39.64 Dear students, now we will find settling time with the help of relation 4 divided by zeta omega n and peak time pi divided by omega n omega n into square root of 1 minus zeta square. Here zeta omega n is the real part of closed loop pole when gain is set to meet the desired transient response meet the desired transient response we also have to design the steady state error the steady state error specification is given by velocity constant and is calculated as limit s approaches to zero as g of s zero as g of s and this will be equal to gain k multiplied by 1.5 divided by 10 dear students now as we have three possibilities of closed loop system poles where we can achieve 1.52 percent overshoot all the three cases with location of closed loop pole closed loop zero gain third closed loop pole settling time and peak time also the velocity constant are summarized in the table students now we have to identify which location of closed loop pole give us a better second order estimation from table 1 case 1 and case 2 have 
third closed loop pole that is relatively far from closed loop 0. And in both cases, there is no pole 0 cancellation. And a second order approximation will not be that much better. Now, in case 3, the third closed loop pole and closed loop 0 are relatively close to each other. So they both will nearly cancel out each other's effect and with this a better second order approximation will result. Now if any of you have any questions please ask.